guys, what's up? This is Liberates, and today we're gonna be I'm gonna be teaching you the basics of an intro and in Cinema 4D. And um, so my mic is really close. Okay, so um, yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna be doing all the fancy stuff in it. You saw like the balls floating. That's not really that fancy, but um, because I would just make the tutorial go really long. So, I'm just going to start with some basic camera movement, some lighting, and how to do that little, <clears throat> you know, that little, the little letter, like, okay, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, I just made a new background in, um, in Photoshop for my channel, and I'm not very good at Photoshop, so tell me if you guys like that. Is it too much, too little? I don't know, just tell me what you think. Okay, so, without further ado, I will present to you my thingy. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, cancel. No, I don't know why I did that. Alright, so first of all, you're gonna want to start off by making text with your name, obviously. So, go to MoGraph and come down to Text Object. And now you're just gonna want to type in your name. I'll just use Tanner for this tutorial, because it's less longer. Okay, okay. Um, now after you have your text, you're gonna want to come to font and just pick your font that you want. I'm gonna use velocity because I really like that font. And change the depth if you would like to. And I'm gonna make it like 50. Mm, let's make it 60, just because we're awesome. All right. So now what you want to do is um on the come to select a text object either by highlighting or just clicking on it and hit C. And what this will do is it'll make it editable. Um, you can either hit C or you can right click and come down to make editable. Whatever floats your boat. Alright, now you're going to want to come to, um, 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 you're going to want to open this little checkbox on text object and then this one and this one until you get all your individual letters. Like you can see that this is this one and s no, I did not mean to do that and so forth and so on. So now you're going to select all these letters. Um, you can either just go like that or you can control and click on all of them but just that's that works better alright now you're gonna take them and you're just gonna drag them out so you're just gonna select them all and then click and drag till you see an arrow like this pointing to the left and then the this you're just gonna come to the text object and hit delete so now you have your individual letters and so from here what you wanna do is go to MoGraph <coughs> fracture object uh, where are you sir there it is and then highlight all your letters and just drag them into fracture object and now it turns a weird black color i guess so yeah that's that's pretty pretty sexy all right now with fracture object selected you're going to come to MoGraph and then come down to random effector so now you can see it already kind of puts a little wave in it makes it look different so you're going to come to the click on the make sure the random effector is highlighted and go to per my mic is really close to my mouth my mic. Okay, come to parameter and basically you just want to mess with these X, Y, and Z scale to where you get um pretty, pretty f spaced. You know, not too much, not too little, but pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty, 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 very pretty. Gotta make it pretty. Okay, so you want to space them out a little bit. Um, I'm gonna move my camera down a little bit, like there. And then, um, once you have them how you like them, which I don't like them, so I'm going to, hold on, I'm just going to toy with it a little bit more. Uh, the Z-axis, come back, no, I'll put that forward more. And then uh, you're going to walk, okay, so that's, that's alright, that's pretty nice, I guess. Now you're going to want to, you can do scale, but I don't, I don't like it. I mean, like, because it just kind of messes with the scale and it makes it look really, really weird. So we're going to uncheck scale. So... Um, another one that I like to do is rotation and just change with these or mess with these coordinates and I'm just gonna see they start to rotate and it just it looks pretty cool I think pretty cool so yeah that that looks about that looks pretty nice for me alright so I'm done messing with them well um, just get them to how you like it and so now what you want to do is um you can see the um come to effector and you can see that if you uh, select the strength and change the meter up then you can see like basically what our effect will be is this and they'll just come together and so basically it's just gonna be some keyframing so um we will get to that in a second hold on I'm gonna actually I'm gonna check my time real quick I'm sorry alright so now I'll go to effector I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with these a little bit more I'm sorry uh, da, 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 da. oh goodness I'm gonna get crap for that <coughs> okay 
that's a little better, I guess. Okay, so now, as you can see, they just kind of come out together. Actually, I'm going to have it kind of fall out of the sky. I'm sorry, I just keep changing it up, and you could probably skip ahead, I guess. I don't know what you want to do, really. Nothing to do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm going to make them negative so that they kind of fall out of the sky and come together. So as you can see, there we go. I like that better. All right. So now you're going to want to, okay, so go to your um your little keyframe down here and change this up to what you want. I like to put it to about 150. And then so once you have it set to how you want, you could just click this little arrow and drag it out. So you can see all your keyframes. You can keep it at 90. It looks fine. But I mean, I just like it to like after it comes together to just kind of sit there. So now we're gonna, <clears throat> you're gonna wanna come take this little green, green, um, little kind of timeline thing and drag it to the very beginning. And then see this little, this little, on strength, you can see there's this little, oh yeah, come, we're come back to effector. And this is where we're at. Random effector and then the effector tab. So on strength, there's this little box, not a box, um, whatever that shape is, a square. No, a circle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm retarded. So what you wanna do is, um, you're gonna control and click in that circle and basically what you've just done is you've just created a keyframe for that certain attribute so now that you have that you can see as you scroll through the timeline it's still not gonna do anything so you wanna come out into your timeline I'm gonna go to around a hundred and then you would like you're gonna wanna change this change it down to zero and then control and click in that circle again and now, as you go through your timeline, boom, you got it. It's just a basic little come together intro. Now, um, let me check my times. Yeah, we can do a little bit more. So now, once you have this, you want your you can do lots of things. Um, I chose to do orbs in front of it, floating around, cause I'm cool. Basically, I'm not gonna show you that because it'll take a while. But I'll tell you what I did. It's basically the same process. I um, I actually, I guess I, I'll I'll kind of roughly explain it. I you just want to import a spear. So make a sphere and then make the radius really small, scale it down to size. Okay, you guys probably don't understand this. You know what? I will make a tutorial later if you guys want it, but I don't think any of you care. Okay, so now um now that we've got we've got the basic movement, we're gonna add a material to it to make it look more spiffy. So you're gonna come down here and you're gonna double click down here to make create a new material, and then you're gonna double click on that material that you just created. And um I'm going to change my brightness up. Oh, one thing I forgot to say is if you're on a later version, like more earlier version, okay, you know what, neither of those make sense. If you're on a newer version of Cinema 40 than me, which most of you probably are because my computer doesn't allow me to get the newest version, then you're keyframing the little red box thing on the random effector. It may look different, but trust me, it'll it's the same process. Okay, so now that I've got that out of the way. So you're going to come to your material under color and... Um, you're just going to want to mess around with whatever color. Get the color that you want. I'm going to get a purplish. And then I'm going to, I always like to come down here to reflection and check this box and then come to texture and go down to Fresnel because I just like Fresnels. They're pretty cool. And then you're going to drag this. You can't just drag it onto the text. Oh, I guess you can. Never mind. I lied. <laughs> Alright, so now you're just going to drag that onto the text and you can see that it is pretty, pretty spiffy. Pretty spiffy. Hold on. I got to check them out. By the way, this is how you get your render preview right there. Okay. Um all right. So that's that. We got our material on it now. And now um let's get into camera movements cuz we're running out of time. So now you're going to come up to uh, actually we'll create a light real quick. Come up to uh, these this little directional arrows and select a light. And then what you want to do is just toy around with it to make it sexy. Um you can change the you can change the color, the lens type of this light. Uh, you can come down to lens, go to glow, where it says glow, and it says inactive. You can make it anything you want. Like, you can make it... One of my personal favorites is candle, actually. So, when you render that out, you see you got a little candle-looking light. You can make it uh, high 8. That's another cool one. Just lots of cool stuff. So, I'm, gonna sh I'm just going to take this light, and I'll keep a high 8 on it, and I'll drag it back, like, right there. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. No, it's not. I'm going to drag it forward a little bit right there. All right, so now what you want to do after you have that is um, you can see on your timeline there's no camera movement going on. So come to the first, the very first, or actually no, you're going to want to see where it lands. Now go to the same thing you clicked on to get a light. You're going to click and hold and go down to camera. And then 
in this camera there's gonna be you're gonna want to make sure the camera selected and go to cameras scene camera scene camera camera now basically um, you're inside the camera and so whatever movement you do it is gonna be shown out of the camera so for the first part I wanna put my camera looking around this area <coughs> like that so now that we have it in a good spot, I'm going to drag this um, little timeline marker all the way to the beginning. And you're going to want to make sure the camera is selected and hit this little button. And what this will do is it will create a keyframe. Okay, now I'm going to come forward to around 100, which is where it comes together. And just move this over to here. La 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 la. So like this. And then you're going to want to click on that little button again and then I'll create another keyframe. So now you can see you got some camera movement going on and it looks pretty good. So now that we're done and I'm running out of time, um, I'm gonna show you guys how to render this out. This is the way I render it because I can't get a certain program which will let me render it as an actual video so this will make more sense once I actually do it. So you're gonna come up here to this little director's clip thing and you're gonna just click on it and it may look different if you're on a different version of Cinema 4D but you're going to want to come to anti-aliasing, anti which it's if you're on a newer version of Cinema 40, then it's going to be right there. I don't think it's in general, but you're going to want to change the geometry to best. And then where it says filter, I don't know where it's going to be on Cinema the newest one. You're going to come down to animation, and then go to output, and change this to whatever you want. But 1280 by 720p is the you know YouTube standards. And where it says frames, you're going to want to click on it and click select all frames so that it will not only just render out the current frame, but it'll do the whole animation so you actually have the whole thing. Okay, and now you come down to save and you're going to want to um, go to format and make sure it's selected on JPEG and then make sure alpha channel is clicked <coughs> and come to path and um, you want to make a folder for this because there's, once again, there's going to be a lot of images. So. I already have a folder. Um, just make a new folder on your desktop, and it's called Animation for Me. Make sure you're selected your your folder, and I'm just gonna name this um, Intro. Hit Save, and then you want to. Um, these are settings that you can use, but they make it look better. But they um make the render time longer. Ambient occlusion and global illumination. And for the sake, I usually use these to render, but they take a lot longer. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm not gonna. So now I'm just going to come here and I'm going to hit render and I am going to pause this tutorial while it renders out. It should just look like this. It'll flip through a bunch of frames and it might not look very noticeable movement, but it is moving. So I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, so it's all rendered out and um, it's in my folder. So now what you want to do is you want to open up After Effects if you have it. If you don't, then um, I really, I really don't know <laughs> how to render it. You could look up a tutorial. There are some out there. There are out there. There are lots out there, but I just, I can't do it, so. You guys may not even want to follow my rendering tutorial, just look it up, but this is how I do it, and it it's, it's alright, it's not bad, I guess. So, while we're waiting for this to load, I will sit here. Oh, goodness, it's taking forever. Okay, and now it's frozen. Cool. Probably should have opened this up earlier. Let's go. <coughs> respond please alright so now you're gonna wanna come to project and you have to import it you can't drag it in you have to import it so double click right here and it will open up this and go to where your images are where the animation is and you wanna come down to the first JPEG image not the .tif but the first JPEG and it's right down here so you wanna come to the very very first one and click on it and hit open <coughs> Now you're going to come down and you're going to drag it to the timeline. And if you scroll through this, you can see it's your animation. And so now what you want to do is you just want to hit control shift slash to put that into the render queue or you can go composition add to render queue and then just hit render. And wait for that to render out. And you're done. Okay guys, um so yeah, I'll show this again at the end. Actually, I'll show mine the one that I did earlier because I like that one a lot. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed and um, remember to request tutorials and if you want to see more cinema, 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 blah, blah, cinema 4D stuff then request it. Alright guys I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Holy crap this is long.